Hello and welcome to a very overdue YouTube video about YouTube. Coffee is an important feature as well as the shih bed and the candle. Do you know what these things signify? We're sitting down and we're having a chat. <laughs> I haven't done a chat video in a really long time. Bear with me as I try to stay focused on the topic. I hope I don't drive you crazy because I'm gonna drive myself crazy in editing. I know this already. I haven't ever really just told my YouTube story why I do YouTube and where I'm at with it and just my experience. So we're gonna do that now. I started YouTube nine years ago, but I didn't start regularly posting anything on YouTube. I started out just making makeup videos because I have experience as a makeup artist. I worked for a lot of makeup brands over the years, MAC, Smashbox, Tarte, Pure, and I was a brand ambassador. So what I would do is travel around the greater Seattle area, going to Nordstrom's, Sephora's, Ulta's, and you know, put stuff on people and let them see the products and we would do a lot of events and all of that was fine and dandy. And then in the meantime, I would come home and film little videos for YouTube. So that was kind of what I did for a while. I bartended a little bit in between this as well. So I bartended for 15 years at the same time that I was doing makeup. So both of those co kind of coincided because it was the only way I could survive. I quit bartending because it became a very toxic environment for me, but now I'm two years sober, so it's just out of the question that I would go back to that. Plus, again, it just becomes, it becomes a really not great environment, but a lot of the videos I posted early on, I was in the bar world, so I was partying. Not on camera, but I took any videos down that I just didn't feel like vibed with me anymore in my life, that I wasn't proud of, the quality, the editing, anything. So all of my old videos have been taken down. I did also do a lot of videos that were, got quite a few views. I have a few that were over 20 to 30,000 views and I took those videos down. And the reason why is because those were Mac and Clinique videos. And at the time I worked for those brands. So I was just sharing things like the beauty gurus do about the brands I was working for. And so they were just kind of educational, kind of. But I don't work for those brands anymore and I still continued years after making those videos, having to consult people like a consultant for these brands in these comment sections. And I was like, first of all, I don't work for these brands anymore. So I don't want to speak to their brand respectfully. I don't want to continue to do free work for them anymore. So I took them down to not have to answer those questions anymore. Yes, it did affect my analytics. Obviously these big view videos, I it just sounds really unsmart to do, but for me, it was for my peace of mind. So I don't care. <laughs> I think I started regularly posting vlogs around the time of the pandemic. At the time I was working for Smashbox and I had just started to pick up hours with Pure More. So I was working the two brands to make more full-time hours. And when the pandemic hit, we were laid off. All the makeup artists and everybody was laid off of their jobs. We were all in lockdown. So I started just dog sitting while I waited it out. And then things never really returned back to the way they were. Things had changed, you know? It took a while for us to even consider if we were gonna put our makeup brushes back on. Testers still weren't allowed. People couldn't use the testers in the beauty stores. I still don't know what the rules are. I haven't been back. In the meantime, I was going through a bit of a situation with learning how to be sober. I just lived that bar life so well that I felt like I was so accepting of the lifestyle of just over drinking and it eventually just got so tiring. I got so tired of trying to maintain this relationship with alcohol that I just stopped altogether and I would like to make that its own video so I will go into that sometime soon, I promise, because I keep saying that I will, but s talking about sobriety and being vulnerable like that, while I'm on the journey trying to figure it out myself and go into therapy, which is another video I wanna talk about because I was diagnosed with panic disorder, anxiety, and agoraphobia this past year, and I would love to talk about that as well because I do find it interesting. I, I don't mind sharing it at all, so I will share those videos, but we're talking about YouTube here, so I'm gonna stay on track, <laughs> okay? Don't you try to suck me into getting off track ADD. So I started doing YouTube nine years ago for fun with makeup, but then I got so sick of making makeup videos when I was doing that for work all day and then coming home and making makeup videos. Why would I do that? But I thought 
all that YouTube wanted to see was educational stuff. I didn't know vlogs existed. I didn't know sharing how you live your life and doing a visual diary was even an option. So when I first saw a vlog, I think it was Zoe Sugg. I took to her because she talked about anxiety a lot and her type of anxiety was very similar to mine. I felt like someone else out there in the world is sharing their life with these these little struggles, you know? And sure, most of her videos weren't about that, but when she did touch on it, I was always perked up and, you know, interested because I have anxiety and I've had it my whole life. And so it was just really, it was just nice to know somebody else out there was doing it. And I didn't share anything about my anxiety here on YouTube for years and years. I think it was just recently that I started talking about it and I did have a few people go, oh, I love, I wanna hear more about that. So if I can help in any way and make people feel related, that's, that's where I fell in love with the idea of vlogging. I saw Zoe doing it and I thought that's what I wanna do. So my journey here on YouTube has really shifted. What I share on a week to week basis now is just my daily life, but I don't go deep all the time. And it's because I'm afraid that people don't want to see that. And I'm realizing that that's the connection that's missing. I want to inv involve that more and not care about what people think about it. People who are more private about talking about therapy and being open about feelings, they're just like, just, you know, walk it off. And that doesn't work for everyone. So my content doesn't have to be for them. They don't have to watch it. I just don't wanna feel ashamed if I do wanna share it and be open about it because if it is helpful to anybody, and this is what I talk about with my therapist, I wanna help. And that's what I keep saying in therapy because I'm trying to understand why I have this drive to do YouTube and succeed. I know that quitting YouTube is out of the question. And when I think about quitting YouTube, I feel sick. I feel like depressed. It's this double-edged sword because when I think about vlogs and when I think about putting myself out there on YouTube and it's a unguaranteed income that you put yourself out there and you work really hard on it and you do all these things and there's just no guarantee that you're ever gonna make money doing it. I've gotten quite a bit of work out of doing YouTube. I've gotten brands to work with me. I've done some user generated content. When you hear UGC, I've, I've made videos for apps and things and just send them off for them to do whatever they want with it. Well, not whatever, but obviously they're advertising and whatnot. I've done paid stuff for colleges. I've done little things here and there. And then I work with Aaron Parsons, which was probably one of the best things that ever came out of doing YouTube was working with Aaron Parsons, honestly. Aaron, if you're watching this, you're like one of the greatest things that has happened to me since I started YouTube because first of all, as a makeup artist and somebody who's been in makeup and I find myself to not be the greatest makeup artist in the entire world. You know, I, I feel like I'm a good makeup artist. So I've always admired her. I found her through looking for vintage makeup. I get, got into looking up like old makeup and I thought, is there anybody out there like doing videos about old makeup? And there she was. And she does all the beauty history stuff. And then I reached out to her. She had mentioned wanting to do YouTube. And I thought, well, I'll help. I can help you with it. Help you get going, edit your videos. Like we can do this. And so we worked together all last year on posting YouTube videos. We try to do a few a month, a couple of months and her channel has gotten over a million followers from it ever since. So it's just, it's really cool to, I actually, with my own eyes, have seen YouTube success and I've almost lived vicariously. I feel that my personal success with YouTube is a little bit foggy. It's a little cloudy. Having vlogged for so long and being at the viewers that I am, because I have jumped around with the type of content that I make and I haven't really been consistent, this is the like year. Like this is the year I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to think more, how can I treat this like a business? Because I haven't been doing that. I've just been playing, I've been whatever. You know, and not that my vlogs are gonna become businessy or anything like that. Like I just, I still wanna have fun. I still wanna overshare my life and treat this like a visual, like video diary. And I wanna connect. I want to offer something that maybe would be useful and helpful to people and I want to inspire. So these are the main focuses. These are the things I talked about in therapy with my therapist. Things that I think would be um, to, something to give back because one thing I noticed that 
I have lost interest in watching is vloggers who just take, 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 who don't have anything to give. They just want to have you watch their fabulous lives. And it's like, cool, that's great. If I don't feel like you're giving anything back, if I don't feel like I'm receiving anything from it, then there's really no point in watching it and that's what people would feel about me. So if my content is just me living <laughs> and you're just watching me live, what are you getting from it? And I want to give something. So I think the best that I can give is helping if someone has anxiety and agoraphobia like I do or drinking. If you're thinking about maybe quitting or maybe you want to know how to quit, I would love to help with that. So I just really wanna include that stuff in my videos. If you have anything that you want from me, please do let me know. My tools that I'm learning in therapy, I try to toss those into the vlogs where I can, but maybe I need to just sit down and, and do like a whole talk through of it. So that way I can refer to it like, hey, if you wanna know more about panic disorder, anxiety, agoraphobia, go check out this video. If you want to know more about how I've become sober and how I've stuck with it for, you know, the years that I've been doing it, this is that video. And really structure it nicely, unlike this video, so that it makes uh, perfect sense. YouTube is really hard. It's something I would love to have as my full-time job, but I know that that comes with its own challenges and issues because it's stressful I think once it gets to a job level and having to maintain that it puts more pressure on things and the more people that watch your videos the more pressure you have so I really embrace these times of having kind of a smaller channel because I feel like I'm really authentically just myself here and maybe if I got to where it was a lot more eyes watching that I would start to maybe overthink some things <laughs> so I just hope that I don't I hope I could just stay this way no matter it's you know two people watching to more like thousands of people watching that i can always just be myself and and be authentic if it's something that you truly love if you are considering starting youtube yourself i tell everybody to make youtube channel i always say start a youtube channel i tell everybody because i think it's fun like i genuinely thought i would be doing this as my job by now and i think that was Maybe a little naive of me to think that I could do this as my job. I never admitted it out loud because I was a little embarrassed that it wasn't really doing anything and that my numbers were really low as far as my followers and my views. And I felt like, well, people don't like me. They don't get me. Like, I'm stupid. My voice sucks. <laughs> it's not very like good for your mental health <laughs> sometimes. If you're feeling low and then you're wanting to see results, it could be so defeating. And I've seen great results. I've had videos that have done really well too. And I've gotten a bunch of, you know, subscribers from like one video and I'm like, there, there, that's what I need to do. But then you don't want to have to just keep making videos like that just because it did that one did well. Cause then it's, you have to niche down and blah, blah, blah. And if you're somebody like that, you know, go for it. Niche can't do it. I can't feel like I fit into a box, like I can't do it. I have to have the freedom of vlogging and making the content that I want on a daily basis, whatever I want, I can talk about whatever I want. How do people get vlog viewers is my question. <laughs> like how do people do it? It's a hard one, I think. But if you, if you enjoy watching vlogs, you enjoy watching people's lives, I question it all the time. I just think it's a silly thing that I'm doing. But I think if I'm, if I'm providing something, if I'm giving something, if I'm showing something, that could be helpful, useful, and make someone feel like they've got someone kind of rooting for them because I'm always, I'm always rooting for the underdog forever. And so I just hope that if you're somebody out there who feels unseen, if you feel alone, if you feel like you don't fit in anywhere, that's me and you're not alone <laughs> and there's, there's other people out there like you. I hope that I can help you not feel so isolated and lonely and just know that there's people out there that have the same struggles and are willing to show it and share it so that other people can feel connected. Man, that's a hard video to make for me. And so I hope it's okay that I babbled on the way that I did. But I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't a subscriber. And I'll continue to be vlogging throughout the week. So stay tuned for that.